Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example, again, we end up with a quadratic equation and we're trying to solve it. With other words, we're trying to find the value for x such that the left side will equal the right side. Since it's a quadratic equation, we want to move all the terms over to one side and set it equal to zero. So the equation then will look as follows. 3x squared plus 6x. When we move the minus 5 over to the left side, it becomes a plus 5 equals zero. Remember, Whenever we cross the equal sign, the sign changes. Now you could try to factor this, or if it's not factorable, you'll have to use a quadratic formula. The general equation will look as follows. It'll look as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. If that's a general equation, we can then see that in this case, a is equal to three, b is equal to six, and c is equal to five. And the quadratic formula will give you the values for x that, so, that satisfies this equation. You can then say that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So all we have to do is plug these numbers in and we'll get the values for x that will satisfy that equation. That's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is memorize that quadratic formula. So, when we plug in these values, we get x is equal to minus b, since b is 6, minus b would be minus 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 6 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 3, times c, which is 5. And that all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 3. All right, simplifying that, we get the following x is equal to minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 3 which is 12 times 5 which is 60 all divided by 2 times 3 which is 6. Now you may say well wait a minute 36 minus 60 is not a negative number and when you have a negative number and need a radical you don't have a solution. Well not quite so fast. Let's see here x is equal to minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 60, which is minus 24, divided by 6. Simplifying that a little bit more, we can say this is equal to minus 6, plus or minus the square root of minus, let's see here, how about 4 times 6? Yes, that's better. All divided by 6. And the reason why I wrote that is because we can take the 4 outside the radical. This can now be written as 6 plus or minus the square root. Oh, a little too fast here because I'm taking the 4 out. 4 is 2 squared, which means we can pull out a 2 times the square root of minus 6, all divided by 6. And of course, we can divide the numerator and the denominator by 2 to simplify a little bit more. So we can say x is equal to 3 plus or minus 1 times the square root of minus 6, all divided by 3. So all we've done now is we divided both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Now this can also be written as 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 6 because the square root of negative 1 is i, that's the imaginary number i, and so this then becomes the imaginary solution. So it turns out that there's no real solution to the problem because we ended up with a negative underneath the radical, which means you can only have an imaginary solution, which includes the imaginary number i. So finally, you can say that the solution to this equation is that x is equal to 3 plus or minus, so there's two solutions, the plus and the minus, i times the square root of 6, all divided by 3. And that would then be the solution, at least the imaginary solution, to the original equation. And that's how it's done.